What's up, party people? That sounded so bad. That's not what I wanted. It's more like a what's up, party people? Okay, I'm done. I'm done, I promise. Normally, I wouldn't do that, but one of my girls, Abby J, spelled A B I J. J's, I think her middle name. Anyway, not important. Abby J, it is important, but you know what I mean. Anyway, okay, well, <laughs> if you know me, you know that I'm kind of an awkward spaz. E person, so on my podcast, I'm no different. Anyway, and I like to say anyway too. What's up, party people? Is one of the phrases that she loved to say all the time, and so I thought it was apropos to say it today when I opened up. But that will be a one and only time thing, so I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> I didn't even say it the way I wanted it to. I just can't say it the way she did. <laughs> anyway, okay. Well, First of all, I have put off recording this podcast episode for several days now, several days, because I've been so nervous about recording this and recording it right. So I learned this a while ago, but have you ever thought about procrastinating and why people procrastinate? I think there are multiple reasons why people procrastinate, but I think one of them is because they really want it to go well and they want it to be good and maybe they even want it to be perfect and they're scared that once they do it, it won't be perfect. But if it's out in the unknown, if they haven't done it yet, then there's still this chance that it could be super good or it could be just exactly what they wanted. And so when you procrastinate something, it's sometimes, maybe not all the time, but sometimes because you really, really care about it and you don't want to fail, which is kind of opposite, right? You think if you really cared about something, you'd put time and effort into it over a long period of time. But maybe on the opposite side, you procrastinate so that you don't have to stress about doing it perfect in this moment. And I think that's what I did. I definitely procrastinated because I wanted this to be really good and really, I don't know, powerful is not the right word, but I just wanted to say the things that have been on my mind and there's been so many thoughts on my mind that I totally, completely, 1000% put it off. So the title of this episode is Just the Beginning. One of my boys actually came up with this title. We were at the dance and we had all sat down after they collected us. And so we were just waiting to be dismissed and moved to the back gym so that we could do the final taking it home message. And so we were kind of all just talking a little bit and talking in quieter voices as they were doing lost and found and having companies go to the back. And I was like, guys, what should I name the blog and the podcast episodes? I need a title. So we were all just sitting there trying to come up with titles and Carter says what about like it's not the end or it's just the beginning or something and I was like oh my gosh just the beginning is absolutely perfect I'm recording this two weeks after this happened or two and a week two and a half weeks after but it will play or be posted three weeks after so not that you care about logistics but in case you do So we came up, or he came up with this title and just the beginning, and I was like, oh my gosh, so perfect. But I was thinking about a few other different titles, and none of them were just as good as that. Another thing that came through my mind was religious rants, but that has such a negative connotation, I feel like. (laughs) And to me, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is not a religion, it's a lifestyle, and it's who you are. And it's not like, oh, I worship because it's my religion, it's like, this is who I am. I mean, it is who you are, child of God, but it is in my very being, and so I don't like to call it my religion because it's so much more than that to me. So religious rants didn't really take across or put across the way that I wanted it to come across, and so when Carter said just the beginning, I was like, yes, this is it. So thank you, Carter. Title creds to you, and I'm very grateful for this magnificent title, so... Yeah, I'm going to be able to use it for this podcast episode title and then one day, one day, one day, (laughs) when I write the blog posts, then it will be the title for that as well. So thank you very much. And I'm glad that we could all come up with it together. And then Carter had a genius idea. And I also feel like it's very fitting because I really enjoyed that week a lot. 
and I think the kids enjoyed it for the most part. Maybe. I don't know. I don't want to speak for them. But I did know that we had a good time. And so he said it's just the beginning. And we have a whole lifetime ahead of us to spend time and to get to know each other better. And so that made me feel really happy. And I feel like the title is very fitting. Another thing that I was thinking for title is something like an abundance of firsts or a myriad of firsts or something. And a myriad means a lot, by the way. Not the word of the day, though. I had a ton of firsts, obviously. If that was the title, then that was there was going to be a lot of firsts. So I kind of wrote down some of my firsts. That was the first time sitting with my entire company at mealtime. We put four tables together, and all 16 of us, including Curtis and I, were sitting at the table. And it was kind of crazy and awesome. I kind of felt bad for the people on the ends because... The conversation was sometimes at one end and sometimes at another end and sometimes in the middle. And so it's kind of hard to hear everything, which is why I think most times you don't sit in a big mega table, but I loved it and I just ate it right up. So anyway, first time sitting with my entire company in a dining hall. It's my first time playing spike ball with my company. (laughs) I know, isn't that crazy? (laughs) I'm sorry. I'm just, I think it's hilarious that we played spike ball together. Uh, also the first time destroying my Tevas playing spike ball, though I am so stupid for wearing them in the first place. They were just playing and I had my Tevas on and I was like, oh, it's fine. I'll play. No, I got into it and my Tevas completely ripped. One of the sides of the sandals came out. And so I was like, oh shoot. (laughs) And then I put tennis shoes on and it was so much better. So pro tip, don't play spike ball in Tevas. Woo. It's also the first time I've gone on two religious rants on my youth. And once again, I've kind of already talked about that. I just don't know how else to name them. And I'll go into a little bit more what those are and what I said and all these things and why I called them religious rants, though they're much more than that. First time I've spent every possible minute with my group. First time I've ever woken up at 5.30, well, been up around 5 a.m. to spend time with my company at 5.30 on a Saturday. I have never done that. I probably will never do it ever again. I still can't believe we did that. It's just crazy to me. I didn't even know if it was against the rules. I don't see why it would be, but part of me was concerned that it would be. It was just a blast. And honestly, I have so many core memories from that Saturday morning. So I'm glad that we did that. Guys, I literally just paused this podcast twice so that I could just laugh because I don't want to just have you listen to me laughing all the time. So anyway, just wanted to let you know I've just paused it twice and just laughed for a minute. (laughs) Oh, okay. Sorry. Spike ball at 5.30 a.m. on Saturday. We also played games. We played gotcha and minefield and did some other stuff and just hung out. And some of the kids said some funny things all over again. And I got to hug everyone again. So it was just awesome. Never have I done that before. And I'll probably never do that ever again. But absolutely love doing that. The first time I've skipped all my breaks on a Friday to hang out with my company. I didn't take any of my breaks on Friday because I just wanted to spend every single second. First time I've written everyone notes. To be fair, last year I normally had anywhere from 20 to 30, sometimes 40, honestly, people in my company. And so there's just no way you can write notes to 40 kids. And maybe some people do, but there's no way I could. I mean, it takes me at least, at least five to 10 minutes each note. Genuinely, it takes me at least five to 10 minutes. And more often than not, it takes me 10 minutes at least, sometimes more than that, to write a note to one kid. And so there's just not time to write every single kid a personal note. But this week I did do that. I did write a note to every single one of my kids. So that was crazy. First time I've ever done that. And probably the last time since 20 people is way too many. I mean, I just about died with 14 because there was just (laughs) so many. I mean, that's 140 minutes, give or take. So that's like two hours approximately of writing notes. And I spent all my break and then I woke up really early. Well, On Friday, some of my girls had morning exercise, and so I woke up, took them down, and then just stayed awake and wrote notes. And then, obviously, I had a meeting at 7.10. So from 5.20, 5.30 to 7.10, I was just writing notes, and then I also wrote some other notes on my break. And Anyway, first time I've written everyone notes, and probably the last time. First time I ever heard about Mormon Riz. (laughs) Shout out to Abby J, Micah, and Molly all having Mormon Riz and recording it. 
that's a perfect segue. Wow, I didn't even mean to do that on purpose. But Micah and Molly have a YouTube, and they would love me to shout it out. So that is M-I-K-A-H and Molly, M-O-L-L-Y. And they are two girls, super, super cute. They have a YouTube, and they posted in a video of Abby talking to different guys and rizzing them up. And if you don't know what riz is, it's the new thing nowadays. And it's short for charisma, right? So rather than saying charisma, it's just riz, chariz, rizma, right? Basically, it's like your game or how smooth you are in talking to people and hitting them up. And so she would just do pickup lines, but they were all... Now I can't think of any of them. Maybe I should pull that video up and play it. You pull it up and you play it and then you'll know. Man, now I'm blinking. Okay, to be honest with you, I can't remember one of the ones she said or how to word it. I can remember several of them, I just don't know how to word it. But one of the ones that I know is, Are you virtue? Because you garnish my thoughts unceasingly. And I did that one and they were like, Okay, that was good, but you didn't do any of the motions. So you're supposed to like grab your face and like pull down and do this whole thing. And I didn't do it right. Or you're supposed to like break and like look away and then look at them again. And apparently I didn't do it right. So I don't have a lot of riz, but that's okay. <laughs> so first time I've ever heard of Mormon riz and enjoyed it so thoroughly. It was a lot of fun. That week was also the first time I had the most fun on a dance, at a dance. Wow, that was really twisted. Okay, basically that week I had the most fun I've ever had at a dance before, ever. It was on Friday. Tuesday was kind of eh, but Friday was incredible. Most fun I've ever had. The first time I've ever had that much fun. I was on dance duty for part one and some of my kids would come over and talk to me and then <laughs> and then an AC, so an assistant coordinator would come over and be like, you guys can't stand here and loiter. And they'd be like, okay. And then be like, see you later, Kyra. <laughs> like, see you later, guys. But I just didn't want to say goodbye to them. So <laughs> it's probably awful of me. But I just wanted to talk with them. And so while I was sitting on dance duty by the bathrooms, they were just standing there talking to me. Yeah, I just had a blast. I probably should have told them to go back to the dance. I just didn't want to. And we were having such a fun conversation. And I just loved them so much that I was totally okay with it. And I kind of felt honored. Like, they wanted to talk to me rather than go dance. And it made me really happy. Then an AC told them to go back. And they were like, bye. <laughs> and it just made me smile so big. Because, yeah, it made me so happy. But when I got off dance duty, I went and found them, a big group of them, because not everyone was dancing, not everyone was all together, but there were a big group of our company that was, and so I found them, and I have never, ever, 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 ever had my kids cheer so loudly when I got off. It was awesome. It was awesome. Honestly, so I have this little journal, and you write one line a day in it. And when I say one line, there's like four different lines, but they're kind of small. And so you, I fit whatever I can fit on those few lines. So less than a paragraph, maybe like two sentences or three sentences a day. But it's just called one a line a day. On that day, I put one of the best days of my life. I'm pretty sure I put some other things too, but I just remember putting one of the best days of my life. And it was, it was phenomenal. Phenomenal. <laughs> it was phenomenal. There we go. Phenomenal. I think I'm going to leave that in there not going to edit it out. So you're welcome. You can enjoy uh, my imperfection and my humanness as I cannot speak English perfectly, nor can anyone else, I suppose, because we all are human and flawed. Okay. I really took that farther than I needed to. Anyway, I had so much fun at that dance. We played that fun little game where you come up with a dance move. You're in a circle. You come up with a dance move. Then the second person well, you all repeat that move, and then the second person adds a move to it, and then you all repeat those two moves, and then the third person adds a move to it, and we created this whole little dance, and honestly, I probably can still do it. We got a video of it, too, so I can always watch it and look back, but I just never laughed so hard and had so much fun, and it was just awesome. You Belong With Me by Taylor Swift came on, and my kids all started dancing and singing the words <laughs> and so I was recording them and it's just the best thing in the whole world and it makes me giggle and laugh and smile every single time. Most fun I've ever had at a dance ever. Okay I'm not gonna lie I paused it again and was trying to organize my thoughts. I don't even know where to go from here because I feel like I have so much more to say and it's already been 16 minutes. I 
sent a message on the group meet to my kids this morning and was like, are you guys opposed to it being two parts and having two different episodes? And one of them was like, absolutely not. Like, of course do it. Abby J actually said that. I don't remember exactly what she said, but go ahead basically. And then a few other of the kids liked it. So worst case, they don't listen, you know, but I'm going to have a blast in the future listening to this <laughs> and just remembering how awesome it was. And hopefully I'll have new experiences and new things to share about these wonderful kids that I just love with all my heart. So anyway, I asked each of them if I could use their name and if they wanted me to use their name. And let's see, four of them never responded, so I just guess not. But the other ten of them did. So I'm just going to say, Carter and Mason don't care if I use their name as long as I don't do them dirty. Which I don't really know what that means, but that made me really laugh. Abby wanted a shout out, already gave her one. AJ wants a shout out. So speaking of AJ, I felt absolutely awful. (laughs) And I'm the worst. Because on Monday, we were playing home evening games and part of the thing about home evening games is you play a game maybe a few times and then you debrief it right so you relate it to gospel principle or how we feel the spirit or relate it to doctrine or things like that we just relate it to the gospel and we were playing this game where you shake people's hands it's more complex than that but you shake people's hands and so I was like hey guys how's this related to the gospel how's this related to real life And AJ says, well, we shake people's hands in real life. And it was kind of a funny, cute little answer. And I should have been like, that's true and moved on. But that's not what I did. And looking back, I regret this moment so much. And honestly, (laughs) I feel awful. And I felt awful for the rest of the week, honestly. I even wrote him a little note. And then I was like, Kyra, just move on. You don't need to keep addressing this. But I apologized to him and felt really, really bad. But basically what I did, and this is awful, so just keep this in mind, that this is awful, and I regret doing this. My sarcasm came out full force, full charging on ahead, and I said, you don't say, really, and I was like, it was bad, and on the podcast it doesn't sound as bad, but like, it was bad. And I'm not even kidding you when everyone just stops. Like, they stop breathing for a second. And then a few people start laughing uncomfortably. And I am just sitting there like, what did I just do? It was so bad. It was so bad. But yeah, he said that. And I was like, you don't say. Really? I didn't know that or something. It was bad. I turned it up so, so high. And the sarcasm was real. And I just felt awful so awful. So anyway, AJ, I apologize once again. You didn't deserve that. And I appreciated that you answered questions all the time and we're always spiritually tuned in. So thank you. AJ was always someone who I could rely on to answer questions and bring us back and bring the spirit. So thank you so much, AJ. And once again, I apologize for sarcastically roasting you when I shouldn't have done that. So, okay. So AJ wanted a shout out. You're awesome, AJ. Micah and Molly wanted me to shout out their YouTube, did that. Haley, Emma, Lauren, and Bennett are okay with me mentioning their names, so I just did. I actually wanted to tell you a quick little story about Haley. So, I guess, okay, this is kind of going to get messy, but that's okay. It's, this, is, this whole thing's messy, let's be honest here, okay? This whole thing's messy. It's all over the place, it's not organized, it's not structured, but I didn't really know how to structure it, and I didn't really care that much, so... Embrace imperfection, right? Embrace the brokenness, embrace the chaoticness, and that's what I'm doing. So I mentioned Haley, and I'm going to hint once again at one of my religious rants. I gave one of those super, super strong, super, I want to say like vehement, but that's not the right word, super vigorous, very vigorous, super passionate, and... I don't know, like super feel, I don't know how to describe it right now. Okay, don't roast me too bad, but I just looked up synonyms for passionate. And some of them that pulled up were intense, ardent, fervent, fervid, zealous, vehement, fiery, emotional, heartfelt. Ooh, heartfelt's a good one. Animated, excited. All of those perfectly describe what this was like. And we were in R&R, so we were in one of the activities at the very end of the day. It's called Reflect and Review. And basically, 
it's when the girls or the boys, you're separated, so you're just your counselor and your group of girls, or your count, the male counselor and his group of boys. So it was just me and the girls, and we started off with R&R, and people were sharing and reflecting, and then I don't know what got me started. I don't know. I Honestly, I'm not sure what got me started, but I got started, and I didn't stop. <laughs> I just got started, and I did not stop, <laughs> and it was one of those... I don't know, Le- lecture's not the right word, but I'll just call it a lecture. It was one of those things where I was so passionate and so animated that I kept hitting the desk. I was sitting next to a desk, and I kept hitting it with my fist. <laughs> Looking back, I'm like, oh my heavens, I cannot believe I did that. But it was all good stuff. I was talking about how much the Lord loves them, how much the prophet loves them, how they can change the world, and how... A myriad of miracles have to take place in order for FSY to work, and how the Lord loves them and knows them, and how I love them, and all these things, and how much I know the gospel of Jesus Christ is real. And honestly, it was probably like, I don't even know how long. It felt like not long, but also really long. I don't know how long it was, but it was probably at least five minutes that I was just talking and going on. And there were tears in my eyes, and I was genuinely pounding the desk next to me. So that's pretty embarrassing for me. But you can see why I'd be a religious rant. Anyway, so afterwards, Haley said to me, Hey, I liked your message. And I'm walking out of their room, because we were in their room that night. And I said, Oh, you mean my lecture? And I said it just like that. You mean my lecture? And she goes, No, your message. And then I said, Well, at training, they taught us to set the ball for the Holy Ghost to spike. And she said, It spiked. (laughs) And then my heart just melted, and it just melted right away. Thank you, Haley. That was amazing. I wrote that down immediately. I have those little emojis. They're like the cry emojis, because that was amazing. It's really cool when you hit one of those moments, and everyone is tuned in, and they are listening, and they are fully engaged. And I looked around at each of my girls and looked them in the eyes repeatedly, and they were just tuned in. I even think I saw a few tears in some of their eyes. And I don't know what it was like from their point of view. In fact, one day I would love to know what it was like from their point of view. So girls, if you're willing, I would love to know what it was like from your point of view because Haley said it spiked, so that's good. But I know that I probably seemed like a crazed lunatic. (laughs) I still can't. I really can't. It was crazy. I probably seemed like a crazed lunatic as I was doing this. But I just really care and I'm very passionate about the things that I love and the things that I care about. And so it definitely came out full force and it was very strong. (laughs) I am curious what you girls think. I really enjoyed having that moment though because, I don't know, I, I love when I feel it so strongly that I just feel like I have to share. And I had one of those moments And I'm pretty sure a lot of the girls already reflected and reviewed and kind of shared their thoughts. So it wasn't like I was just lecturing the whole R&R, but I did go on a quote religious rant, and that was the first one of the week. I went on another one later in the week, but I decided I'm going to have to talk about that episode too. So I am so sorry, boys, because you're going to have to wait till episode two to hear it, but you will hear it. So keep that in mind. Just listen to part two. Unfortunately, I have a schedule, so I won't post that till next Monday. But I am going to pause, push stop, and then record the next one. So it will be recorded in the same day if you care about logistics. But yeah, that was my first religious rant of the week. And I went on another one on Thursday. And that's a whole other different story. And I don't have time to tell that one. So I will tell that later. But for now, I'm just going to hurry and share these two cute little videos. We will! Draw it in! Isn't that the cutest thing ever? It just makes me want to smile so big. Also, I love how they said it like that. We're taking home our testimonies. I didn't even tell them to do that. I just said, why don't you guys take home your testimonies? And everyone was like, yeah. So we create this little video, it's a take it home video. And one of the things that I do every Friday is I record the kids saying certain things that they're going to take home. And this is on my YouTube channel. So anyway, not trying to self-plug here. Yeah, so I 
created a little video for them. It's called a take it home video. And I have some of them take home friendship or some of them take home their testimonies or some of them take home their dance moves or all these things that are kind of FSY related. And they were like, we should take home our testimonies. Or maybe I said that you guys should take home your testimonies. And they decided to get everyone in it, which was super fun. And they said it like that, which was just adorable because sometimes they're like, we're taking home our testimonies. And you're like, oh, okay. How about a little bit more enthusiasm, guys? But no, they had so much enthusiasm and it was just awesome. Guys, there's literally two minutes left till it's 30 minutes. And I'm sure I'm going to edit this down so it's going to be less. But I need to wrap up because this is not looking good. I am talking way too much. (laughs) I knew that it would be a part two. I just knew it. Because let's be honest, I know myself pretty well and I knew that I was going to go over. So it's weird that you can just talk for 30 minutes straight. Maybe that shows how insane I am. (laughs) Anyway, moving on. Okay, so the word I chose was prudent. It is an adjective and it means wise, well-judged, judicious, sagacious, sage, advisable. Uh, But then it also means acting with or showing care and thought for the future. So I wanted to kind of say that... FSY, I feel like it's a prudent program. We are acting with or showing care. We're acting with care and thought for the future. We want these kids to go out and change the world. We want them to know who they are. We want them to feel loved. We want them to know who they really are. We want them to know that they are children of God. We want them to know that. And so I feel like FSY is a prudent program. There's prudent activities and prudent classes as we show care and thought for the future and honestly I feel like my company that week was we just had so many prudent memories we were trying to help ourselves out by maybe taking videos and trying to write things down at least that's what I did so I could remember because it was just an incredible week and indescribable week that I honestly I just couldn't I couldn't not write things down because it was just so awesome so That's the word of the day. The quote of the day I've heard many times and throughout all the different sessions because it's so good. This is by President Benson and he says, When we put God first, all other things fall into their proper place or drop out of our lives. I know that's true. I've seen it in my own life. When I put him first, the important things stick and the important things matter and everything works out. And sometimes it takes time, but I just don't worry as much as I used to, because I know that when I put him first, things work out, and it's so much, it's so much more peaceful, and less stressful, and more comforting, so I believe in that. Well, there's definitely going to be a part two, 1000%, because there's a lot of things I didn't talk about that I would like to. Don't know how long the episode will be, so sorry in advance, but thank you guys so much for listening. Don't forget to embrace imperfection, find meaning, satisfaction, and joy from the journey. I'm Kyra, and this is Imperfectly Broken, the podcast. Do, 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 do.